Taurus singles welcome doing the singles reads for the first half of December this is meet the soulmate and uh, it's meant to be a predictive read assuming you are single is someone probably not in your sphere right at the moment but this is for the first half of December so it's what we're thinking about with this um, and all I'm doing is describing, I'm asking spirit to help me describe this person that's going to be coming into your life if you're completely single, totally single. Um, and this is uh, meant to be the person that's right for you. That's what I'm asking. So uh, it's not naturally a triggery read, uh, unless you're extraordinarily triggery. I did pre-shuffle. So we're going to look at the uh, four pillars, I call it. Just eight cards, two for what I call emotional area of their life. And the next is the intellectual, and two cards for love and sex. Uh, Venus and Mars energy will look for astrological placements too. You might have something of a chart put together after this is uh, over, so hopefully you're into astrology. Uh, plenty of places to generate free charts now. It's pretty easy. And then we'll look at the core values and lifestyle. Let's get started with the emotional aspects. Look at the seven of wands. Ha ha ha. Wow, and here I'm going to see the moon, too. So, I swear I read the moon. This is in the emotional area, but the four cards on top do represent conscious energy, too. Um, I think what we got here for a moon is an Aries moon, guys. Look at that. I mean, is that not... First thing that came to my mind was a warrior. And I tell you, I just... I wonder if this person... I'm not sure yet from this one card, but... Uh, I think they were warriors in past lives, uh, Taurus. They will even have you believe. They may actually run that by and be like, what? Yes, I know I was. I remember them or something. And I was told, you know. Um, and um, look at him. He's putting the sword right through that. Well, I mean, there's all kinds of symbolism there that goes back, huh? So, the chariot. What an amazing card to get. This is in the deep unconscious position of the emotional area on the bottom so we have also here see family home childhood that kind of energy here so we have this uh, Aries uh, moon with this cancer energy of the chariot uh, I kind of said I won't see yet but now I'm starting to feel it's hard to believe someone with the chariot here in this position wouldn't be like a spiritual air um, energy um, um, an Aries moon could be Aries moon maybe it's in the ninth house maybe it's in the eighth house maybe it's in the twelfth house something like that um, the chariot here I often see the chariot as being aligning with our soul's purpose this person you might find they mm, rather fiercely aligned with what they perceive as their soul's purpose, even as a young person. And even if they didn't quite conceive it as, well, that's my soul's purpose. Like I look at the astrological natal chart, it's simply a star map of our soul's purpose. That's the most basic thing it is. I always keep trying to remind myself, star map, soul's purpose, because you get lost in the details. And, um, so this person somehow has a sense of what's right for them let's put it that way and with this Aries moon I mean they will go for it and this could mean anything from challenging other people potentially fighting other people in some sense I think with this person it could be fighting the establishment uh, they're set up here and it's going to be in their astrology uh, really they're kind of set up your person here get it down here where I can see it more um, to sort of challenge um, everything um, that they didn't feel right, doesn't feel right to them. And what if they have any spiritual sense, then this they would clearly see this that doesn't feel like it's part of their soul's path. You know, they could turn down jobs, relationships. It, it would just be a clear sense of like, yeah, that's a lot of money. It's pretty gravy. Yeah, they're a beautiful man, beautiful woman. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't care that that's not my path and that's what they're going to go with, you know, um, wow. And now we're looking at the Ace of Swords. 
And this is the clipped art deck, by the way, erotic art deck item. Um, this is in their intellectual position. This is where I'll normally see the sun now. So air, um, I think we're looking at a Gemini uh, sun. And let me see what's under that. The King of Cups. And the King of Cups. And I think we have a Pisces Mercury. So you're looking at, look at the what's going on with the balance though with an Aries uh, moon. If you know, if you want to know about Aries moon, just Google or YouTube, there's going to be a lot of stuff, you know. But then uh, add to that, then, and that's, you know, cardinal uh, fire, meaning what? It's directed energy, emotionally. There, they, moon is what we need to feel good, feel uh, safe, feel balanced. And so for an Aries moon, what really they need to do, they feel like they're moving in the right direction, you know, but they have a Gemini uh, sun. And um, I think you're looking at a Pisces here. Um, really, I think maybe re let's restate that Cancer Mercury, um, because we also have the Cancer here with the chariot. So cancer mercury which explained uh the chariot there and it also would explain the sense of knowing what's right for them they don't think about it they don't have you know even though they're a gemini um in terms of what's right for them it feels right you know um that's what it means to have mercury in cancer uh, because if mercury's in cancer mercury's all about thoughts doesn't give a shit about feelings Cancer is all about feelings. Don't give a shit about thoughts. Cancer is the moon. Cancer is the I see. Cancer is the unconscious, right? Um, so it's an interesting combination for a Gemini, because one thing they can also Gemini is the energy of Mercury, so they cannot. You know, you could look at a person like this if you just looked and said, well, the top two is Aries moon and a Gemini uh, sun. And think well that's not going to be the most emotional person in the world but i think as you interact with this person you went on the first date the way they would engage with you this gemini way would be very engaging and disarming and friendly um, but it would also be caring you know they would they would give you the sense that they care about you they care about what you're saying particularly here so in being the king of cups it's just they are that way down in the very core of them, you know, they have that cancer energy. Um, <clears throat> so it's quite a combination, I like it. Well, this is the Wheel of Fortune, a beautiful Wheel of Fortune. It's a Jupiter card. So this is in the, uh, what I'm gonna look at, the love and sexual aspects here. Now, let's see what we've got. This is Venus up here with the wheel, down here with the Ace of Pentacles. This is Mars energy coming in. The Ace of Pentacles. I'm thinking an Ace in the up your sleeve, kind of with that. That was my thought when I saw it. it was not really logical. It's just, but when I have that thought, it's like I know it's not mine. It's like they, they got an Ace up their sleeve. It's something to do with their Mars. So Gemini, Cancer, Leo. If it's a fire Mars. And I don't think it's Aries. That's too easy. I think they got a Leo Mars. And it's an ace up their sleeve. You know, one thing about a Leo Mars is um, they are, can be very brave when they need to be. Mars is being brave. Mars is how you take action. It's how you fight. Um, it's how you assert yourself. Uh, how you just take action. Um, so here's the thing though, with Mercury in Cancer, um, there's a lot in terms of the way they would think is they would be concerned about others. Um, but the Leo Mars would be capable of protecting not only themselves, uh, but others. And so I get here, uh, if it, this is a male, what kind of this screams to me is protector male, protector male. You know, I see very good energy here. Now the Wheel of Fortune is difficult to uh, place here, 
But it's Jupiter energy, so and it, it's their Venus. And if they're a Gemini, you know, um, now this could be Aries coming in as their Venus. And then if their Venus is conjunct their um, moon, that would make sense to me. So I think of the natal chart, you're looking someone with an Aries Venus conjunct their natal Aries moon, Gemini sun, uh, Cancer Mercury, okay, you've got the king of cups and the chariot here in the unconscious position with unconscious mind and the deep unconscious. And meaning too, there would be karmic implications here. Maybe there's a nodal attachment to the Mercury. Look for that. Some connection to the nodal axis in their chart, you know, a conjunction, a very close trine or, you know, something, sextile. So with the wheel here being in, being this Venus, I think Jupiter is somehow in a trine to their Venus or conjunct their Venus, blowing up the Venus here. Um, that they have uh, in Aries. Um, so with the Venus in Aries and a Mars uh, in Leo, um, finally, I've been doing a lot of readings. This is the, for one thing, just to go with the sexual aspects, this is the fiery lover who, they will have you pregnant before you even close the bedroom door behind you. You know, and it'll just be that kind of uh, passionate, fiery, uh, love making with this person um, and co combined with the way they have this sense of like going for it and what's right for them that the wheel of fortune and this uh, Leo Mars here you know the uh, Aries Venus and Leo Mars it's the same kind of energy it's like really going for it. you know Venus what you love it could be if you love your work um, you know, it could be a sense of like, so, in, you know, you see the sword prominently. I, I'm not, I don't, I think what they do is communication. It's how they write, they communicate some way. So, but they're bold, they're brave when they need to be. And I think this person is really good at taking advantage of opportunities, okay? That's something that comes up here. Uh, whenever, you know, it, it, we all get lucky, we all get opportunities, you know, which there's a German phrase, I don't remember it, but, uh, you know, luck is infatuated with the efficient. So there's that. It's like a running back, make a football analogy, how did they just have that instinct, they hit the hole, hit the certain hole, they, they have like less than a split second to think about it, and they just tend to pick the right one. I mean, before it even opens up, you know, so they could have that kind of energy with this. Look at this huge ace of swords here, you know. Um, so my guess is, let's see now with the core values and lifestyle, they would have done well for themselves over time with this combination of energies here. That's how it works. And the high priestess, this is in the core values and lifestyles, guys. High priestess, the hollow bone. This is someone they communicate for a living. I mean, it could be anything from a psychologist. Um, they could be a professor, but I mean, of like the esoteric arts, a philosopher. It could be a religion, anything from a religious leader to a spiritual leader to a life coach to a tarot reader to a psychologist to a um, you know a astrologer, right? Something like this. Um, an outright healer, I think too, with Jupiter coming out and Leo here with this Mars. A lot of people, I, I've read a lot of charts for psychics, uh, uh, you know, energy workers, light workers. And Mars is important, you know, it's not just about fucking and fighting. You know, if you're going to heal someone, if, it's, uh, if you're doing something receptive, a mediumship, psychic ability, if you're doing any kind of healing, here comes Mars, it's going to get involved. So they have this ability too with this uh, Leo Mars. And uh, woe be told anyone who assaults their uh, personal uh, family, what they can, whatever they consider their personal family, this person would be a lion protecting their cubs. So seven of cups. So seven of cups under the high priest is even more so to me. Um, 
The Seven of Cups, you know, which often can go with, the, can be emotional turmoil, it can be indecision. Kind of look at it here and look at it with the High Priestess. Just look at it together because this says a lot. I'll tell you what, this person, they aren't really going to care too much about the home, number one, practically speaking. They're going to leave that up to you, male or female. Um, this person um, spends a lot of time um, kind of in the depths. It's like they got one foot on the other side, right? The veil is thinned up now. Maybe it's always been like that for them. Um, and more and more, it makes me think of a healer. And this seven of chalices, to me, seven of cups is, is having access to the other side emotionally with the high priestess. And it's emotional. And so there's got to be then an emotional component to what they do. You know, we have this king of uh, cups representing their mercury and Capricorn here. Um, I mean, Cancer here. So what they do is, you know, highly intuitive, maybe psychic. Uh, it involves a, a lot of feeling, um, putting their feelings into it. Um, I think in terms of the relationship, um, it would be a very passionate male-female relationship with them. Whether they're male, whether they're female, even though they're Gemini, I know it can represent both. I think they've pick, picked one. I'm not making any, start any fights, it could be gay, whatever. Um, but they, like they know who they are, they know what they are. And sexually, they don't have any hang-ups. They're very straightforward. And they're, they're you know, I'm a, a Mars and Sagittarius, and you know, they're like a Mars and Aries and stuff is a very, very, very um, fiery and passionate kind of energy. Um, so, you know, for anyone that thinks that spiritual people or light workers or empaths or just these, you know, waft, waffly uh, spiritual creatures with no earthly desires, um, well, <laughs> this person's going to show you something different, you know. Yeah. Like we're only human, and uh, everything's spiritual. Dick, a vagina, a table, a window, a church. I, to me, it's all it's all spiritual. It's all here. So, thank you guys. I hope you got something out of that. I hope this person pops up. It's gonna be a minute. Could be today. Could be just after you listen to it. I hope it's the first half of December. Get back to me and let me know. Leave me a message. I appreciate it. And do, if you can think of anywhere to share this, any platform, social media, please do. And if you haven't subscribed, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell. Um, always on Mondays is Aries and Taurus Day. I'm a little behind this week, so I apologize for that. But I did your readings first, guys. And I'm just going to catch up when I can. You know, energy's been hammering me. Thank you.